Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up the QNAP QHORA 301W Wi-Fi 6 router for the first time. Now I've got a bunch of videos coming up on this and I'm sure the hardware review is already out there but for today I'm just going to show you guys how to set this up but a few parameters straight away. I'm going to be setting this up in a Windows environment and I'm using a Windows PC over here so things are almost certainly be near enough identical for maybe a Mac user that's going to use Safari or something but do bear in mind I'm using Chrome on a Windows PC. Also I am utilizing this connected to another router. I already have a router up here at the top and I'm going to be connecting it into an existing network. Now we'll highlight this later in the video but this video is going to be more for people that are adding this system to an existing router in your network environment. There's lots of ways to do that and there are of course users that are going to be taking advantage of one of those many, many WAN ports there on the rear, the 10G and going straight in. So this isn't a video for those of you that want to be setting this device up as a pure QU WAN or SD WAN environment here, taking advantage of that. These are for people that are going in to take advantage of the Wi-Fi 6, the 10G networking, and ultimately using this as an upgrade uh, from an ISP router into a prosumer situation okay so again another thing you might want to do is if you do have a core router in your home or business environment maybe disable the uh, wireless connectivity on that throughout the course of this video it will make things a lot easier um, not to have two different conflicting wi-fi signals in your home or business environment but for now let's go ahead and start the setup so when you receive one of these it will have um, a version of the operating system inside QU router already installed. Uh, I believe the, the version at launch has already had a firmware update with a few extra features added, so you will want to update that firmware early doors. Now, send it up for the first time. It's important you get the right ports. You can do this wirelessly, but this video I'm going to go with wired. And you can see there, look at those four LAN ports there. So for this, what you want to do is make sure that the cable you're going to be utilizing for the internet is connected into port one. That's that port right there. Now you connect that into port one. And then for the next step, make sure you have got a cable connected for this, for a window setup connected between a laptop, which is what I'm doing here, and get this connected into port four. Once you've got those two cables connected, make sure the device has not been powered on and then connect the power cable. Make sure the switch is powered to down and you should be able to see there that the lights will begin to kick in. You can only just make those out, I think. The white setting on this may be playing havoc with the white balance here in the studio. Now you need to leave this setting up for a few minutes where it initializes itself and then while that's doing that, we're going to make our way over to my laptop here where I'm going to show you and walk you through the extra steps you need to do on the laptop side of things. Let's flip over to the screen. Now from here, the next thing you're going to want to do is head over to QFinder Pro. Now for those that don't already have it, this is the tool that's utilized for searching your local area network for NASes, as well as in this case, this router and indeed switches as well. If you don't already have this, you can head over to QNAP's own website. If you go to the QHORA page, then head up to Downloads, not Specifications, go to Downloads, and from there, it will give you the available utilities and applications that you can use to interact with your device. That beep there in the background, the mic is particularly close to the device, will make its own impact there in the background. As you can see, the device has connected directly to the system via that wired cable. I also have a wireless connection here in the background. You can disable that and it may actually make things a little easier there in the background if you disable your Wi-Fi moving forward. Now, as you can see, there's our applications and you want to head into the App Center to get QFinder. But for now, once you've got QFinder installed, open up the application and scan your local area network. As you can see, it's found the Kihora router there on my local area network. The NASs that were there before, because I've disabled the Wi-Fi, are no longer present. 
And then you just need to double click here and it will open up a new tab in Chrome. And now we're looking at the initialization stage and set up for this device. It will guide you through how to set the Q router up for the first time and although a number of the key steps can be skipped, I'd re recommend going for a few of them. Click start and from here it will give you the option of setting up Q1 which is something we're not going to do at the moment. Now as you can see I am recording this video using the OBS software so there may be the odd little bit of interference there in the background but it should run absolutely smoothly. This shouldn't be a big graphical enterprise. Now from here it will ask how you want to set up your WAN system. Now, if you are going to be keeping your network uh, very static and you're going to be having a lot of preset shared folders, uh, preset shared drives, and lots of devices in a movable network environment, you're gonna want static, as well as PPOE for the more integral structured um, Wi-Fi modem points. But for now, I'd recommend DHCP for first time setup and ease, because you can alter these values later. It's going to go ahead now and continue through to the next step of the installation. Now, during this, it will ask you to select which region you find yourself in because different areas of the world have different regulatory domain rules. I'm in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to head down here. And bear in mind that in the majority of cases, things are the same in most regions. But bear in mind that in some areas, the, the WAN capabilities or the SD-WAN capabilities are ever so slightly clipped and make and force you to rely a little bit more on MPLS, uh, the kind of precursor to SD-WAN. So select your region and click apply. It will then go ahead and uh, continue the initialization of the device and bring you through to the login screen. Before we do that though, it is asking us about a firmware update. As you can see from a previous setup video when I was getting ready for this, I've already updated this device to the latest version, 1.0.90002. But do double check if this number is different because it will double check if there are newer versions of the firmware available so you can update to them. Or you can go for manual updates by going to that download center there. As you can see, it is the latest version. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click skip because I've already updated the firmware to the latest version and now the system is gonna ask me to log in. Now, there are two default credentials when logging into this device. The first is admin and utilizing the MAC address of this device found here. Alternatively, you can also enter the uh, login information located on the base of the device with the uh, default credentials on there. But if you have reset this device to defaults previously, chances are you're going to need the MAC address. Once you've put that password in, in my case the MAC address, go ahead and click login. Bear in mind you can also log in remotely using the QNAP ID. And if you register remote access credentials to this device, it will allow you to configure the Q router over the internet, not just the network. I'm clicking login, and as you can see, it's let me straight in. The first thing it's gonna ask me to do is change that login credential away from the MAC address credential for added security. So it'll ask me to set up a brand new username, which I'm gonna go with admin, and I'm going to add a new password. From here, I'm then going to click okay. It's let me know that it will now create these login credentials and it will log us out just to double check that these are working as well as continue the installation for us. And here we are on the desktop interface of this device. I'm gonna do a full video overviewing a lot of the features and functionality of the Q router, but for now, this has been how to set up your Q router for the first time. Do head down to the Clients tab to identify different connected devices, such as the laptop that we're using today, and go into some of the system options to add rules, features, and other user access controls for other users and more, as well as binding to that remote access QNAP ID over the internet 
and more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And I am going to be looking at this device in more detail as well as comparing it against the Synology Router series very soon. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to learn more. And visit the links in the description for more reviews and guides on this series of devices as well as the best places to buy them right now in 2020 and 2021. I will see you next time.